Welcome to another tutorial on TwinCat PLC automation from ControlX Engineering. This is part four of the multi-part series on programming in TwinCat, where we explore the full suite of PLC programming languages available in TwinCat. In today's tutorial, we'll look at another real-world application, and we'll be using FBD, or Function Block Diagram, which is a graphical programming language to program and run our application in TwinCat. So let's get started. In the previous parts of this series, we programmed our application projects using all of the languages shown here. We even created finite state machine logic using LD and SFC. So be sure to check out those videos if you haven't already. In today's tutorial, we'll be programming our PLC project using another powerful programming language called FBD, which as the name suggests, is a graphical programming language using blocks or boxes with inputs and outputs linked in such a way that defines the required control logic. The basic unit of the FBD, just like the ladder diagram, is a network consisting of blocks. You may recall from our tutorial on ladder diagram, a network is also referred to as rungs, as illustrated here. Every network contains a structure which can represent a logic or arithmetic expression, the call to a POU, which can be a function, function block, program, or library POU, or a jump or return instruction. Boxes representing operators and functions are connected by connecting lines. The signal flow in the network is from left to right and from top to bottom, starting from network one. One main advantage of programming in FBD is a clear and easy to interpret intuitive visualization of the logic. The FBD editor is a combined editor for graphical programming of the function block diagram, ladder diagram, or instruction list languages. We have already covered ladder logic in a previous tutorial, so be sure to check that out. The link will be on the screen and in the video description. The editor shares a common set of commands and toolbox elements. The toolbox elements can be dragged and dropped into the editor to create the logic. The elements are arranged into groups. For example, this grouping contains the commonly used Boolean operators. This grouping contains the IC function blocks like counters, timers, triggers, etc. The use of these built-in function blocks has been covered in our Understanding PLC series. Be sure to check out that playlist for detailed use of these function blocks with examples. These are the math operators like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and comparison operators like less than, greater than, etc and many more operators like move, select, data type converters, etc. The code is uh, structured into networks and can be interchanged freely between the FBD and LD implementations. For example, the ladder diagram can be converted to FBD and vice versa using this option from the FBD LD IL menu. Here is an example of a simple FBD program that is executing Boolean logic to turn on some output bits. In the first network, either of these two input bits or conditions must be true, and either of these two input conditions must be true, which satisfies the AND function. This triggers the pulse timer, and the output uh, B result 1 becomes true for two seconds. Similarly, in the next network, if either of the three input bits is true, and this bit is true, then the output B result 3 stays true. The same logic can be shown in ladder form by changing the view from FBD to LD, as explained earlier. This is the ladder representation of the same logic. Some operators have fixed inputs, like the division operator, for example. It has two inputs, one for the dividend and another for divisor. This operator can never have more than two inputs. However, other operators like addition and multiplication, for example, can have multiple inputs. Some Boolean operators like AND, OR uh, can also have more than two inputs. In this example, I have the AND operator with two inputs. We can add more inputs by right-clicking and selecting Append Input to add more inputs as required. We can also change the operator type by clicking on the name and changing it to the required operator. In this example, I changed the operator name from AND to OR, and now we end up with an OR operator with three inputs. If the operator was, however, changed to division operator, for example, the block would change from three inputs to two inputs automatically, since, as explained, the division operator can only have two inputs. If you look at the toolbox, you will see an item labeled as box. This is a generic box, which can be used as any operator function or function block, simply by replacing the question marks with the name of the desired logic element. There is also another item called box with en slash eno, which is the same generic box with additional input and output labeled as en and eno. This Boolean input en can be considered as an enable input, and it controls the execution of this block. The operation defined in the box is only executed if the enable input is true when the block is called. The ENO is the same enable input passed through as the output and can be considered as an enable output and used to tie to the enable input of the next block to its right as a daisy chain. To see how this box works, here I have an addition operator with two inputs A1 and A2 
and the output sum1 saves the result of a1 plus a2. The output sum will update itself whenever the inputs a1 and a2 change. Now we have the same functionality, but with the other counterpart. Here the, sum, here the output sum2 is not updated unless the en input is set to true. If en stays false, then sum2 will hold on to the last computed value, even if its inputs a1 and a2 are changing. Once en becomes true, then the output sum gets updated. This can be useful if the logic execution of certain blocks is required to be done only under special conditions. Next, let's see how to do math using function block diagrams. For example, let's try to evaluate conditional algebraic expressions. Imagine we have two variables, x and y, and we have to evaluate this expression on the condition when x is less than 10. Otherwise, we have to evaluate this alternative expression for every other value of x greater than or equal to 10. Let's look at the FBD representation of equation 2 first. We use the required math operators, and the result is saved to the output variable fvar. Uh, pretty straightforward. Next, let's look at evaluating e equation 1. It looks similar to equation 2, uh, except for some additional logic on the division symbol. Uh, this extra logic is to prevent division by zero by making sure that the divisor x is not zero. Here we check if the value of x is greater than zero. We could have also used the not equal to operator, but in this application, x is always positive, hence the use of the greater than operator. If x is greater than or equal to zero, then the g input of the select operator is true, which results in its output being the variable at in one input. Otherwise, if x equals zero, then g is false, and the output of the select operator is in zero, which has been set to one. Therefore, the division operator will never get a zero as the divisor, thus preventing a PLC crash. This is the full logic uh, to do the conditional algebraic expressions. In network one, we compare if x is less than 10, then jump to label equation one on network three. The next network, uh, number four, has the return statement, which causes the program to exit. On the other hand, if x is greater than or equal to 10, then the condition on network 2 jumps to network 5, which evaluates equation 2 as required. An alternate way to achieve the same result and also simplify the logic in FBD would be by introducing structured text to evaluate the algebraic expressions within the FBD implementation. This can be done by using the execute block. This element provides a means to directly enter ST code in the FBD and LD editors. You can drag the execute element from the toolbox. When you click in the white space, an input field opens where you can type in multiple lines of ST code. Here I've entered the algebraic expression I want to evaluate. This single line of ST code can simply replace this entire code block of FBD implementation, thereby simplifying our logic. For the application programming, let's look at a tank level control system example for today's project. The goal of the project is to control a pump that fills a tank to a certain level. When the tank reaches a high level, the pump should turn off. When it reaches a low level, the pump should turn on. We'll also add a stop button for manually interrupting the pump and an alarm feature to detect if something goes wrong. There's also a float switch, which is placed above the high level sensor. During normal filling operation, the pump should stop once the high sensor comes on and the float switch should never get triggered. If something goes wrong and the float switch gets triggered, then the alarm gets set. This project will demonstrate FBD's power in building clear logic flows and is a practical example where FBD really shines, helping us manage sensors, timers, and conditions to control a pump and maintain the desired tank level. Let's define the main inputs and outputs of our system. For inputs, we have the float switch, which is labeled FLS, which detects if the tank is filled above capacity, a high-level sensor, or HLS, which detects when the tank is full, a low-level sensor, or LLS, which detects when the tank is empty, and a stop button that lets us immediately stop the pump if required. For outputs, we'll use uh, a pump motor output to start and stop the pump, an alarm indicator that activates if a fault is, uh, has occurred. The following are the fault conditions. Uh, the stop button has been pushed, which interrupts the pump operation. Uh, after the pump has started and the high sensor has not come on after a certain amount of time, indicating maybe the filling is not uh, taking place. Uh, or the float switch gets triggered, indicating overflow condition. With this out of the way, uh, let's hand over to Andrew, who will walk us through the TwinCat project in FBD. Hi, this is Andrew, and I will be walking you through the process of implementing the tank level control logic in TwinCat using function block diagram. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the tutorial. I have opened an empty PLC project, and we will begin by adding a new POU to create our logic. 
Let's call it Program Tank Level Control. Make sure it's of type program. And from the Implementation Language drop-down list, select Function Block Diagram, or FBD. I'll start by creating the required variables for use in our logic. Now, I will implement the pump start logic. When the tank liquid level is low, the high level sensor will be off and only the low level sensor will be on. As the tank empties, the low level sensor will eventually turn off. We can use these conditions to start the pump. In other words, the pump start condition is no HLS signal and a falling edge on LLS signal. We will use these conditions to set the pump output bit. For this, we will need in and operator and a falling edge trigger for the low level sensor. Let's call it F trig LLS. In the auto declare pop up box, click OK to accept. Let's assign the variables to the inputs of the and block. Since we want to invert the input condition for HLS, simply click on the input and right click and select the negation option. You will see a small circle appear on that input, which indicates it is a normally closed input. So a false on HLS will satisfy that input. Finally, let's assign the pump relay output to the falling edge triggers output pin. Simply add an assignment pin from the toolbox and enter the variable name to it. We want this output to stay latched. For this, we can right click and use the set option. This will be indicated by the letter S next to the variable name on the output pin. The pump start logic is done. A falling edge on the low level signal and no signal on high level sensor will set the pump relay on. Next, let's move on to the pump stop logic. Start by inserting another network below this. Enter a name for this network for clarity. Good documentation is always a good idea when programming PLCs. Once the pump starts, the filling will begin and the low level sensor will turn back on. As soon as the high level sensor comes on, or if the stop push button is pressed, we stop the pump. So for this implementation, we need the Boolean or operator to reset the pump control variable. Right click on the output pin of the block and use the insert assignment option and enter the variable name. Similar to the set instruction, which latches a variable, we have the reset instruction, which unlatches the variable when the conditions are true. This is indicated by the letter R next to the variable name. The basic start and stop logic has been implemented. Let's test it out. But first we have to edit the main program to add a call to our tank control program. Now we can activate this project. Project has been activated. Now we can log in and test our PLC program. A falling edge on the FLS should start the pump and when the HLS turns on, the pump should stop. So first I will assert the FLS and then turn it off which should turn on the pump. As the tank fills, LLS turns back on and then HLS will turn on and the pump should stop. Our basic start and stop logic is working as programmed. Let's log out and next open up the visualization that I had created for this project for simulating the sensors as graphical buttons. I've also added the two outputs, one for pump relay and another for the alarm output. Let's test the logic from our visualization. The pump is currently running, and as the tank is filling, the LLS turns on first, and then the HLS turns on, and the pump stops. As the liquid in the tank is being used, the HLS turns off, and eventually the LLS will turn off triggering the pump restart. Let's test the stop push button, which can be used to manually interrupt the filling by shutting off the pump. However, after the pump shuts off, there is no means to manually restart the pump. Let's modify the pump start logic to restart the pump when the stop push button is toggled off. I will add in or block, so either a falling edge on the LLS or a falling edge on the stop push button will each trigger the pump restart. Okay, let's test the modified logic. Toggling the stop push button off now turns on the pump output, as required. Next step is to add the alarm logic. Akil asked for three conditions to set the alarm. First, after the pump starts, if the HLS does not turn on after a period of time. Second, if the float switch is triggered. And third, when the stop push button is pressed. Start by adding another network below and I'll give it a title called alarm logic. Next, I'll add a T on timer from the function blocks group in the toolbox and call it T on pump. Its input trigger will be the start pump relay output variable. And for the preset time, I'll set it to 10 seconds. 
Next, I'll add the rest of the logic for the float switch input and the stop push button input. For the output, we will set the alarm bit and reset the pump relay bit. Anytime an alarm occurs, the pump should stop. We can add another assignment variable to the same output by dragging the assignment element from the toolbox and dropping on the output pin. I'll set this variable as a reset. We're almost done. One last thing remaining to do is resetting the alarm after it has been set. We can make it reset whenever the stop push button is pressed. We can add the alarm reset condition to the pump start logic. For testing the timer logic, let me add the elapsed time to the visualization so we can see when the alarm should come on. Okay, let's toggle off the LLS to start the pump and we will let 10 seconds elapse before the HLS turns on. Keep in mind that the time displayed here is in milliseconds. The HLS did not turn on in time and we have an alarm exactly what we wanted, toggling the stop button clears the alarm and starts the pump. The HLS stops the pump as before and the LLS starts the pump. Pressing the stop button also stops the pump and triggers the alarm. Just what we wanted. Now, pretend that the pump is unable to stop and continues filling the tank, which will trigger the float switch. This causes an alarm. Good. And this concludes our tutorial in FBD programming in TwinCat. Hope you found today's tutorial helpful. Thanks for sticking around, and I'll see you all in the next one. Now, back to Akio. Uh, that's all for today's video. If you have any questions or suggestions about today's video, please leave them in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, then please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future tutorials. As always, thank you for watching and keep innovating.